CDN is back. I don't know. It's been a hot minute since they have put out anything on their website. I don't know what's been going on. It's been like bad gateway. So they're finally back. Damian Parson is here to bring a mock draft in 2024. So let's get into this thing. We'll be doing a mock draft reaction today, and I'm going to scrutinize each pick under a microphone. No, I'm not. We will we'll take a look and grade each pick and stuff like that. Starting off with the Bears, though, and they go Caleb Williams. Justin Fields has made great strides, proving he has a high ceiling to reach. But it's a fresh start contradicting there a little bit. But, hey, I get it. Some people are still go quarterback with this number one overall pick. For me personally, for I just go grab Marvin Harrison Jr. I mean, if you can, trade back one spot with the Commanders and try to sell the New England Patriots trying to come up or something like that, and that way you can still get Marvin Harrison. Like That would be the dream scenario for the Chicago Bears. In my view, there's no trades in this mock draft, so let's take that with a grain of salt. I would give this one like a B because for me personally, I think you stick with Justin Fields, you go get that next weapon in Marvin Harrison Jr., and then you have yourself an elite receiving core in Harrison and DJ Moore. So anyway, reset the quarterback situation. It's an option. It's something that's going to get talked about more and more as we get into this draft process. On to the command, Drake May, quarterback, UNC. Definitely good pick here. I know you're like, oh, Tar Heels back to the Commanders. Oh, no, they won't do this. You never know. Hey, new ownership. We'll see what Josh Harris wants to do. But you're picking number two overall. I think quarterback is very, very likely in the cards for this team. And yeah, they do have plenty of playmakers for May's disposal here. Just need to improve the offensive line slash hope some of those young developing guys like uh, Braden Daniels and Ricky Stromberg come along next season. You're going to have to probably be bringing a free agent or two to help out Drag May in this scenario. New England Patriots, here's Jaden Daniels. You get yourself a franchise quarterback here. I'm not going to lie, I'd be tempted to go Marvin Harrison Jr., but, you know, you got to go quarterback. I mean, that's one thing I'll say for the New England Patriots. Jane Daniels has immense upside with that athletic ability. And, yes, he's going to, you know, the Lamar Jackson tag is going to get thrown out this season, especially with how Lamar Jackson has played, of course, MVP's type season. This name's going to get thrown out for Jaden Daniels, and that's going to help his stock out a lot. And for good for good reason, Patriots, you got to get a quarterback. And the real question, too, for me, I, I should throw out there is, will Bill Belichick be the head coach? I can't wait to see what happens. They're like, yo, after this game this week, I mean, like, that's going to be what I'm tuned in to see. Will Bill Belichick get fired? Because if he does, I'm going to have to do something crazy. I'm going to lose some bets now. <laughs> but anyway, I give this pick a solid A because you got to take a chance on the quarterback. Jane Daniels has immense upside with that athletic ability. I still believe he's a little bit behind in terms of his overall reading the field slash getting the ball out on time, but that athletic ability is going to help you out early on, and I think he's got all the potential. Also, Will Bill Belichick, you know, in something with a dual threat quarterback, he hasn't had someone like Jaden Daniels to develop. On to the Arizona Cardinals, Marvin Harrison Jr., A plus pick, boom, sealed, signed, delivered, mail it at the post office, UPS, direct, next day shipping, lock it in. New York Giants, Brock Bowers, also like this one. I think this is a solid A pick for them. I know you say, oh, Darren Waller, you got Daniel Bellinger, but Waller is getting older, injuries, etc. I just go say, take a super weapon, take the best weapon available. Super Bowers, to me, is that guy. You need to get playmakers, and especially if, like, the top three quarterback. I know quarterback comes up. For me, I, I, I say this, I think you give Daniel Jones another year, get fully healthy, Put playmakers around him. Build your offensive line because I think Daniel Jones at this point is underrated. I know Jones fans are getting triggered right now. You're crazy, G Sling. Yeah, I know, but I think he's super underrated at this point in the NFL. People think he's terrible, like Zach Wilson level. And trust me, I don't think he's Zach Wilson. I really don't. I mean, he's not. I don't think he's an elite quarterback, but I don't think he is the worst quarterback. I don't think he's one of the worst quarterbacks in the NFL. You know, Zach Wilson, he's one of the worst starters in the NFL. Let's be serious. Be there. I think he's a good backup to have. On to the Tennessee Titans, Olufashanu, A-plus pick here, self-explanatory protection, quarterback, Will Levis, getting hammered, getting killed, you can't have that any longer, you need to protect him, Olufashanu has probably the highest pass-blocking upside up there in this class, Tyler Guyton has some upside too, I just did a review on him, I like Guyton a lot, his athletic ability, man, his upside there, Los Angeles Chargers, Middle League Neighbors, whoo, going back-to-back -back receiver, Quentin Johnson hopefully takes that next step next year, but hey, let's throw out another pick. And, you know, you're getting a little bit older at receiver plus Mike Williams. You move on from him. Slash Keenan Allen is getting older, so you have to think about it to the future. And especially if Quentin Johnson is a bit of a bust, then you got to keep throwing at it. you got to keep saying, hey, we need another weapon. we got to make sure this offense is 
has enough firepower to compete in a very tough division. Overall, I would give this pick like a solid, like A minus. Like I think there's other bigger needs on this roster, especially defensively. They're gonna have to get some help. But at the same time, Malik Neighbors to me is a top five type of pick in this class. So I'm not gonna knock you for doing something like that. Uh, New York Jets, they go get Joe Old. This is an A-plus move as well. Self-explanatory. Protect Aaron Rodgers or any quarterback. It is terrible, man. So we need offense line help in all desperate ways. Falcons, Michael Penix Jr. I love this one. You know, I love Michael Penix so much. And Michael Penix, IU days, man. People go back and say, well, Washington, they were able to protect him. Trust me, go back to watching the Indiana tape. This dude can handle under pressure with some of the best quarterbacks in this class. He knows how to get the ball out on time. He can read the whole field. He's got a great overall pocket presence. I love Michael Penix Jr. And you see some of the tight window throws that this guy's able to, oh man, no, <laughs> makes my head spin. It's so crazy. I love it. A plus move for the Falcons. They don't have to trade up or nothing. On to the Chicago Bears. Romo Dunze, all right, okay. Hey, you don't get Marvin Harrison Jr., but you now go get Caleb Williams and get him a running mate on the outside with DJ Moore and Romo Dunze. I don't hate this draft. Again, it's an option. It is something out there. I'm not going to hate the, the idea of going Caleb Williams, even though I do think you keep Justin Fields. But maybe you can get a first-round pick at this point for Justin Fields, or at least a conditional 2025 first-round pick. I think that's very possible, actually. It might be like a second-rounder slash conditional if he pays like you know over 75% of the snaps. So it is an option. I, I do throw that out there. You get cheaper technically because you got to pay Justin Fields probably next season, give him that extension if you don't get a quarterback in this class. So getting Caleb Williams would reset that free agent or that rookie contract. Getting Romo Dunze here, I love that actual move. I think it's a good value from Romo Dunze who is working himself very much into a top 10 pick. He just, he's got that prototypical size, solid speed. The ball skills are some of the best in this class, period. On to the Las Vegas Raiders, Jerzon Johnny Newton. Here's Johnny. He's going to be the guy to go on that interior defense line, which I do think is a need for them. And you got a lot of older guys, too. I mean, the, the, only, the only young guy that they really have there is Byron Young, who they invested a third-round pick. They do have Matthew Butler, too. I mean, they threw a fifth-round pick into him. But any which way, like, they, they're going to need to replenish. you got Jerry Tillery, you know what I'm saying? you got but Matthew Butler. they got, they got some older guys on that front. They need to start getting younger, and Jerzon Newton would be. I mean, they, they played uh, Tyree Wilson on the inside because I think they're desperate. They need help. And maybe, look, Tyree Wilson, maybe he gains 10, 15 pounds this offseason and starts moving into the inside. Like, I thought he had some really good reps, especially versus Kansas City. I was watching him on the interior defensive line there, and he looked good. He looked, Actually, in my opinion, probably had his best game. We'll see what they want to do if they want to keep him off the edge or if they want to move him to the inside. But for what I know right now, I would say you go ahead and, uh, just get somebody on that interior to get to beef up the trenches some more because they do need an impact more on that interior front. And if you can't get a quarterback, you're saying, hey, we're at the number five, you know, this is the number five quarterback off the board. We don't feel comfortable with Bo Nix or JJ McCarthy. Then maybe you wait until the second round because I think there's a good chance that you can go snag one of those guys at this point. Then Minnesota Vikings, they also say the same, maybe. Uh, Kirk Cousins, I know people don't like Kirk Cousins. I like Kirk Cousins, man. I don't know. I, I think he's another one of those guys gets hated on. I think he's a top 10 quarterback. Let's say they go get him back. Jared Verse, boom, get some more edge because Daniel Hunter's a free agent. I mean, the whole edge room group basically is a free agent. So, yeah, you got to go ahead and help that out. DJ Woman's a free agent. Marcus Davenport probably will not be back. So, Jared Verse would be a nice addition to that front. Amarius Mims and New Orleans Saints. All right. I mean, Mims has the athleticism, movement skills to move over to left tackle. Trevor Penny experiment hasn't worked out so far. Yeah. Now, the way I can see this too is Mims could end up being just the right tackle, the future Ram check. I know that, that sometimes, man, those knee injuries, they can be reoccurring and it could be a problem once you get into like your 30s and whatnot. So I don't hate this pick in general because Mims might end up having to be the long-term right tackle. They need more offensive line protection, whether it's the interior offensive line or on the outside to protect Derek Carr. And for me personally, like Mims, this dude is insane. Like I think he's a top 10 type of pick. Like this dude looks like a top 10 pick. And the flashes he has shown, and not just flashes, man, like he was dominant in the Georgia Tech game, had a great Tennessee game, like some of his back half of the season, I know he had injury, hit the tightrope, but man, he was, his tape is really impressive to me. The dude has immense power, JC Latham level power, plus I think he's got better overall foot speed. And just the overall size, like he's an NFL tackle. He looks like an NFL tackle. He is 
has the overall mentality to be a dominant tackle at the next level with some more work and progression there, which I've already seen a lot of him progressing his technique from last season to this season in the limited games alone. I think his hand placement was way better from my eyes than it was last year. On to Denver Broncos. They got to lot to get an edge rusher here. And like they've got some decent edge rushers, but they don't really have a number one guy, right? Browning is fine. I think Browning's definitely somebody, you know, Cooper, like they've got some guys, you know, we'll see about uh, Nick Benito. I think he'll be a nice situational player too, but I think Leatu comes in and ends up being their number one guy. And Leatu in this class to me is like a top 10 pick. I know you get the medical situation. If Denver can't get a quarterback here, if they're not comfortable with quarterback five, go get an edge rusher. The value here on Leatu Latu is great. A plus type move. Seattle Seahawks, Cam Kitchens, this is a scheme fit, right? This, you think, you put him back in there to be the Errol Thomas of this defense, and you got Quandre Diggs at this point, you're probably thinking about moving on there. Jamal Adams, I don't know if he's going to be back. So getting some more help in this secondary would be a nice addition, and and yeah, I like this one a lot. He's just that perfect scheme fit for them as that back-end patrol and interception machine. Cam Kitchens is a perfect type of Seahawk that I could see. Now, is it their biggest need? Good question. I, I, you know, I would personally lean towards like offensive line. And you know, it depends if you want to say quarterback of the future. Always looking at different scenarios there, but offensive line for me, maybe even going after an edge rusher here and and could you know get a number one edge rusher to pair along with Boye Moff, say for the future and a Chino Nuosu have that combination. Hopefully, Derek Hall can come along. Any which way, I'm not gonna. It's not the worst pick I've ever seen though. Like Cam Kitchens, it makes sense. Like it makes sense to me. <laughs> and, oh man, Carvana commercials. Those things are brutal. Cincinnati Bengals, Keon Coleman, get that outside playmaker. I, I don't love this one for me at the moment, mainly because I, I really believe T. Higgins will be back. Whether that's a franchise tag, whether that's an extension, we shall see. I think they're just going to work it out. I, I really doubt that he will not be back. So I see this more of like they need a slot receiver in like round three, round four, slash maybe a tight end also. Maybe look at a Johnny Wilson on day two, slash early day three. They could look at a tight end there too. But I think overall that's more of the mold that I'm looking at here. Maybe you could look at either the offensive line protecting Joe Burrow, slash having a better run game, right? A Talalesi Fulaga here, Tyler Guyton. You know, Guyton's good in zone blocking. I really like him on second level pull blocks. But getting something like that is kind of what I'm looking at here. Or even JC Lake. Them, right jc latham has dominating one-on-one power if you're gonna you know especially for a gap team on to the arizona cardinals nate wiggins a plus a plus value absolutely love this you get your lockdown corner and this to me is the perfect value for nate wiggins right in the mid of the first round bowman yeah I can, I, there's not much else i can say about this this is a great pick on to the pittsburgh steelers jc latham okay so you go pair out Broderick Jones, you get him that uh, running mate on the opposite side, J.C. Latham right tackle, and Broderick Jones moves back over to left tackle. I'm okay with this. It Obviously, I think Chucks is going to get let go after this offseason. We'll see what they do in free agency. Uh, so, overall, I can give this one a solid A move. I think Latham would be a great value to at 18. I have him as like a top 15, top 10 type of pick as well in this class. I think his strength is phenomenal. He gets the Alabama tag. Oh, he's going to be Evan Neal 2.0. No, man, he's totally different than Evan Neal. He was, oh, I don't know. It is what, it's my opinion. It's my opinion. I think he has way more power than Evan Neal does. Way better balance than Evan Neal does. And overall, Latham is a freaking forklift when he gets his hands on you, which I think his hand placement is pretty dang good, too. His foot speed isn't elite, and that's why maybe you say he could be a guard at the next level. I do think that is a real conversation to have. So we'll keep an eye on that combine-wise, especially. Talalesi Fulaga, offensive. This is, this is a perfect scheme fit as well for the Green Bay Packers. A-plus move. He gives them that mentality that they need, and he could even slide into right guard for this team if you want to keep Rasheed Walker at the left tackle position, Zach Tom at right tackle. Fulaga would give him that run-blocking menace upgrade over John Runyon at right guard. Uh, Tampa, Xavier Leggett. <laughs> oh, okay. So, look, Leggett has, he is a physical specimen. There's no doubt about that. And I think Leggett has some of the highest upside I mean, besides, of course, Marvin Harrison Jr. and and Malik Neighbors to me and Romo Dunze, those guys are really good. But Leggett is in that conversation, like that tier two conversation where if you get him to the right scheme and he has the right development curve with his size and speed profile that he brings, he could be a DK Metcalf light, an AJ Brown light type of person in your offense. And you're looking at long term. I do think they're going to have to address the receiver position. Godwin's a free agent in 2025. Obviously, Mike Evans is a free agent, but I think you give him a lifetime contract. I'll be real. 
So, I don't, I, I, you know, not the worst pick at all. And I think Baker Mayfield will get re-signed. I know Tampa Bay Buccaneers fans may not like to hear that. But typically when you make the playoffs, you're doing something right. So I think there's a good chance Baker gets re-signed. And, and while he's not the an elite quarterback, I think he can get the job done. Especially if you have more playmakers. Calls go Troy Franklin. Okay, Troy Franklin. He is, look, I like Franklin. I still don't view him as a first rounder personally. I think he ends up going in the first round. And that's fine. Like, I think he's not, like, I don't think he's going to be a bust. I think he's a good receiver. I just don't know if he has, like, the high-end tools to be, like, this high-target guy. I think he's going to be a very, very good deep threat slash he's got, a, you know, good route running, all those type of abilities. Like, this dude is going to be a legit deep threat. The big thing with Troy Franklin is his size concern for me and him maybe struggling at the catch point versus more physically dominate, dominating corners at the next level. That's the only real concern for me with Troy Franklin. But if you're talking about him as a upgrade of years in this system, like that makes so much sense. And Michael Pittman being that X, Franklin being that Z, Downs being the slot. That's it's good. I, I like the process there. I think that's a very, very solid process. I also think cornerback would be nice here. Cooper DeGene might be pair along with Juju Brents would be a cool combination too to improve that secondary, give them like a number one, number two, like give them an elite combination of cornerback. On to the Jacks, and they go with the Jacks. <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson, the Jag. But they're going to get Graham Barton, offensive line, which is something where it does depend, right? Is Ezra Cleveland going to be back after they traded for him? Slash, they could use an upgrade on that interior in general because Brandon Sheriff is getting older now. So you have to think about that long term. Heck, Brand Graham Barton could also play center. Luke Fortner has not been amazing. He's been okay, but you could upgrade. I mean, I'll say you could upgrade. You're hoping that at some point he starts developing and getting stronger, getting better. But Barton could play all over your interior offensive line. I could also see them even looking at a, even at a tackle. You never know, right? Some, or somebody that could play tackle too, right? Because Walker Little still is inexperienced left tackle, tackle position. He's been okay for my eyes. I, I wouldn't say he's been elite. He's given up some plays. He did end up getting that one in a play where Trevor Lawrence got injured on overall. He's been okay. But maybe you look at like a Jordan Morgan because Morgan could also play tackle for you. Slash, I think he could play guard. So giving you that swing capability. To the Rams, Kool-Aid McKinstry. Getting a cornerback in this secondary makes a lot of sense for the Rams. You just go get that number one corner, which is something that they desperately need. This is an A-plus move. Great value, too. I think Kool-Aid McKinstry at 23. I'm, I'm cool with him in the mid-first round, no problem. On to the Buffalo Bills. Chop Robinson, A-plus move. This is a perfect Vaughn Miller type of understudy in my eyes. Absolutely love this one. This would be a really cool fit. He is the most explosive edge rusher in this class, the most physically trait gifted guy. You think of Michael Parsons, of Vaughn Miller's, like he can be that. He just got to get some more play strength. He's going to have to develop his pass rush repertoire, but he has all the potential to be an elite pass rusher. So, I, yeah, that one I love a lot. Kansas City Chiefs, Brian Thomas, I love this one too. You get that big, explosive vertical threat. That's going to be a huge upgrade over MVS. A-plus move, you have to get a receiver. Kansas City Chiefs fans, I know, like, oh, I got a receiver. Philadelphia Eagles, Terry and Arnold. I like this one a lot, too. I think this is a solid A move. I think Terry and Arnold is a very, very good corner. He's very physically imposing in the run game and at the catch point. And somebody that can come in, play in the slot for this team, also can play on the outside long term. So you can figure it out. But to me, you can get immediate upgrade in your secondary, which is not a not good secondary this year. Maybe part of it is a scheme thing and, and getting a you know, new defensive coordinator. But we'll see how some of these sh things shake out. I think you got to still find some more youth in this this room and get better detroit lions cooper DeGene, great value a plus value getting cooper DeGene, one of the best playmakers in this draft in the secondary and now you get yourself a number one corner and you know pair along with brian branch in the slot yes i like this a lot yeah i really do i think this would be an a plus move and i talk about with the lions you know whether it's cornerback edge rusher Offensive line, like those are the three areas that I'm looking at for the Detroit Lions. You should kind of just go BPA between those. Obviously, you got free agency. You're going to fill some of those voids. But getting Cooper DeGean would be a great value and a great addition to the secondary to bolster it up even more and get them get their defense to where it needs to be, which has been better for sure. Houston Texans, Byron Murphy, another pick I love here is one I mocked personally. And I think Byron Young is exactly what they need on the interior for that Houston front. You go get another impact player. You know, you got Malik Collins still under contract, but besides that, like it's it's kind of thin there. You need an upgrade. And I think Byron Murphy gives you a really, really nice run defender as well as the high end pass rush tools that he provides, the explosiveness off the line. You need somebody else and on that interior front, especially. 
Miami Dolphins going Jackson, Powers, Johnson, getting that center of the future. If Connor Williams does not come back, then this one make a ton of sense. And look, even Will Williams could play guard too. Like they just need to take the best offense lineman available. They did re-sign Austin Jackson, so you should be good at right tackle. I could say Jordan Morgan here too because he could end up being a long-term left tackle slash play left guard for you early on. You know, Taron, Arm or Taron Armstead has injuries, which, you know, that's been unfortunately a thing for him. Maybe you put Jordan Morgan in at left guard, and then he ends up being a swing tackle for you. Either which way, like, I'm, you know, Jackson Powers Johnson, I actually do think it's worth this back into the first round pick. I like him a lot. I think he is, you know, I know Creed Humphrey gets thrown out there, but he's got that big lumbering build like Creed Humphrey. He's super powerful. He's a Rossler man. And I think he's, you know, not the most athletic guy. I don't know, you know, yeah, okay. I thought he said he's super athletic, but he's not. Yeah, I don't think he's the most athletic or nimble guy, but he's really, really strong. He's going to be a very, very good stout protector on your front. And then on to the Dallas Cowboys. Jordan Morgan, Arizona offensive lineman. I was just talking about him. Huge Jordan Morgan fan. I think his balance and overall strength shows up big time, man. And Morgan, he you can tell he's putting in a lot of work. He's a four-year starter. He is an absolute monster. And for the Dallas Cowboys, you plug him in maybe at the left guard position. Or even, even hey, keep Tyler Smith at the left guard position. Have Jordan Morgan be the left tackle. Who knows? Maybe Jordan Morgan even slides over to right tackle if Terrence Steele continues to struggle. Like, you're going to have to figure some things out over at the right tackle position. I almost like Kingsley Suamate a lot, too, for this team because of that versatility that I know he can play right tackle as well. At the same time, I think Jordan Morgan is a better day one prospect than Kingsley Suamate, so I'm not going to knock that at all. Speaking of Kingsley Suamate, here he goes to the 49ers. I think this is a great scheme fit. He's got those movement skills that you look for. I think he's still a little bit uncomfortable on an island and pass sets with his overall footwork, but and also his punch timing at times. Should I say? I don't know if that may have it. Anyway, Kingsley Sulente, plug him over to the right tackle position for Colton McKivick's upgrade there. And McKivick's can also be a swing guard for you slash compete with Spencer Burford at that right guard position, but definitely a need of upgrade for the 49ers in this team. And he could even be the long-term left tackle for Trent Williams as well. It'd be an option to think about. Offensive line for Baltimore Ravens. So we're going offensive line, offensive line, offensive line. Rolling it out here. Good finish to this draft, in my opinion. Baltimore Ravens get Troy Fantanu. Slide him into that left guard position. Day number one. Be that, you know, with, with John Simpson being a free agent, this does make a lot of sense to me. You get that help on the offensive line. Fantano also can be a swing tackle because they, you know, injuries there. The tackle position for them has been something that they've come accustomed to. And you got to think about it. They do have Patrick Murray still under contract. However, long term, you know, you think about that. So offensive line, definitely a priority, whether that's Tyler Guyton, who to me, I like him a lot, too. I see him as a really high upside tackle. You could maybe think of him as a future Morgan Moses replacement option. Overall, offensive line, I think, is a good move for the Baltimore Ravens. That is it here for TDN's back in session mock draft. Damian Pearson, Parson, great mock draft. Enjoyed it. You know, disagree with a couple picks. Like the Chicago Para pick, you know, I, I still think Justin Fields is it, but I mean, you know, that's teach his own. Everyone has different opinions on that. Let me know your thoughts, your opinions. What did you think of this mock draft? What would you do differently? I hope you guys have a really good day and a good start to the weekend, man. Let's go.